right, guys, here we are. Wait, I gotta do an Instagram. You guys gotta give me a shebang, you ready? Guys, I'm on stage with Cannon, and we're gonna do a three, two, one shebang. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, shebang! All right, all right. You guys excited for day two? It's happening, it's happening. Here we are on the Cannon stage. I got the flex kit behind me. We're gonna talk headshot photography, and I'm gonna give you some tips on directing your subject and how this all goes down. Here we go. All right. I, should I post that later? I'll just post it now. What do we got to lose? Uh, you guys, by the way, if you want to see that on Instagram, you can follow me and you can check out my stories and stuff. I am a headshot photographer and portrait photographer from New York City. Uh, I've been in ex a Canon Explorer Light since 2015. And I love coming and speaking to you guys. My specialty is working with the human face. How many people have faces? Everybody's got a face. Okay. How many people know what to do with their subject with their face? You know what to do with it? Because you learn from me? All right. You learn from me. Guys, I did write the book on headshots. It's this book right here. And uh, I run the Headshot Crew, which is my coaching platform. And there's a show special I'm going to tell you about which you can check out. If you sign up on your phone, you can get a discount and, and get in on my coaching program. I can teach you how to make money in, how much money are you making with headshot photography because of me? <laughs> a lot, a lot. But we're gonna talk Canon and, and we're gonna talk about the EOS R specifically because that's my camera of choice these days. How many mirrorless shooters? You love it? You loving it? Is that the future? Is that what's going on? Have you seen this lineup of lenses? I'm going to use two lenses today that I love, the 85-1-2, which is on the camera right now. And I've got the, where is it? I've got the 70 to 200, 2 8 around. But this lineup, they also have a trinity of, of lenses. And if you were here yesterday, you would have seen me work with that, the 15 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200. And we've got this bad boy right here. And if you look at the new form factor, it's a lot smaller than the old one, right? It's really cool. I love it. And it's sharp as a tack. So we're going to shoot some shots and see. How many people, um, I, need a, I need a challenging subject because I want to shoot some stuff. We're going to talk about camera height. We're going to talk about a little bit of posing for headshot photography. I always stand people. Uh, and I just like doing it. I like standing people up to elongate their bodies and get them going. Uh, how many of you guys shoot headshots? Awesome. How many people have charged for headshots? Awesome. That's what I like to hear. I can't believe that people stand in front of my camera. I get paid to press the button and it's a headshot. All they do is, I've been doing this since 2004. I mean, I set up these, this, uh, this setup, specifically the triangle light. If you look at anything online, you can see me working with it. I designed this with Westcott. It's called the Flex Kit. It's a Cineflex. And... Um, it is awesome. So I'm going to shoot. So I'm going to show you how it's done, but I'm going to need a human being that can get in front of my camera that has a specific issue or something that I have to overcome. Who's got issues with their face? <laughs> Everybody? Nobody? We got hands raised. We got you. Got issues with your face? Do you have issues with your face? No. What did you do? I love the nose ring. I like the hat. Can I photograph you? Awesome. What's your name? Bethany. Bethany, here. Can I lift you up on the stage? You're pregnant? Oh, my gosh. When do you do? June. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Lose the lanyard. She's got a nose ring situation going. I like the, the, the little the hat. She's, she's got, got it going on. Get in this light. Look, this is what I do. I can you handle that? Is it bright? You're good. I stand people in this light. And I point the camera at them in their general direction. I press the button, and it's usually the best headshot that they've ever had in their life because if I could do better lighting than this, I would. The recipe works. I could teach you how to do it. But uh, let's just see. Um, all right. So, Bethany, where are you from? All right. Your nose ring is skewed. Can you center that sucker? There you go. That's better. Thank you. You can't have a skewed nose ring. Why would you have that, right? Uh, so I do a triangular setup for a reason, and I'm going to show you a build as to why, okay? So the first light, which is my key, actually, Bethany, it's bright in there. Step out here for a minute. 
Let me see. If you did part your, go nose this way a little bit. Go nose that way. You may be ambifacial. Ambifacial, you know what it is? I made it up. If, if you're good on both sides of your face, you're ambifacial. So I could shoot any side of her. So whenever I get somebody in there the first time, I do three shots. I do a head-on head shot. I do one with the nose to one side and one to the nose to the right. But we're going to do a build here so I can show you uh, what we're doing. So I'm going to turn off two of the three lights. And I'm, imagine you have one light. Can you do this with one light? You probably get away with it. But if you're going to really, you know, invest in yourselves, you probably want to have three. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of reflectors unless I'm using natural light. I'll reflect the source that is used. So if I'm using uh, continuous light, I like to have another continuous light as part of it. So the three light setup is three lights instead of two and a reflector. So you got to put some money towards this, obviously, if you want to do it that way. If you are, so get in there. Let's take a shot. Let's take a shot. So now you can see we've got the key. I'm keying left on her. So stand very straight to me. There you go. Scooch back a millimeter. Let me fix your, come and turn towards me. Guys, styling's important. I don't, I want this to be, you're fine. Settle down. Can you see yourself? No. No. So let me do it. All right. And everybody always asks me if I touch people. They're hiring me to photograph them. So yeah, I get in there and I do what I need to do. Now, if you don't feel comfortable touching people, just don't be creepy about it. You know, it's like, you got to be careful these days, but turn very straight to me. I always shoot what I consider the head-on headshot, very straight into the camera. So let's take a shot. Let's see if I can get this going. Can you guys put me on here? Actually, I can do it from the camera. I'll just, I'll just toast this. Turn the body a little bit more this way. There you go. Jam your fort. Now, the move that I always do, number one way to make your subject look their most attractive self is what? What's the number one thing to make a human most attractive? Who knows? I did a video. There was, it's got 5 million views. This, you got to get the jawline looking good. So, Bethany, this is what we're going to do. I want you to imagine that there's a hook in the top of your head. It's attached to the ceiling by a string, and there's some gremlin up there pulling you up. So you're straight up. Do you see the difference? Everybody do that. Stand straight up. Right? You see the difference? Now, that what you want to do next is imagine that there's a string between my lens and your nose. Look at me. So you're going to go like this. You're going to stand straight up, and you're going to go like this. You're not going to move your shoulders. Try that. Let me see. That's it. She's got it. Okay, now I can take a shot. So since we're doing a build, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm at one, one, I'm at, you want me just to tell you my settings? Or should we make them up? I just, it's easier if I just tell you. So I'm at 100 ISO, right? The 85, one, two, I really like it at 2.8. So I'm shooting 2.8. I use each lens differently. The uh, 70 to 200, I like it at f4. What I like are the eyes in focus, and I like the ear to go, start to go soft. So the 85 has a really nice bokeh, and it, it does it really well. So Bethany, stand up straight, turn your shoulders slightly towards me. There you go. Jam your forehead out and down. And then imagine I karate chopped you in the face, and I want you to tilt your... There you go. Now bring your chin out and down. Out and tilt this way. There. Hold that. Don't move. Stay right there. We'll take a shot and see how this looks. There you go. Hold it right there. Good. And she had a nice hint of a smile, so we'll take it. So... I don't know, I was guessing, first shot you always take should be a guess shot. I wanna show you the difference that this makes as you, uh, I hit play. Can you guys get it up on that screen? I don't know, I'm hitting it. I'm giving it a second. I got to see the shot, guys. Hold on. Should I wait? All right, so let's talk while they're figuring out how to get this shot so I could see it. I don't even know what I got there. He's working on it. Um, but basically, so what I do is I start with them straight on. Does everybody know which side? I always talk about the good. There we go. Bethany, come here. Do you have a better headshot of yourself than that? You do? You do? That's pretty good. Is that pretty good? It's not my light, but it's pretty darn good. It's cool. I like it. I didn't even direct you, really. Do you see the fall off and everything? Look at the, look at the, um, you're supposed to say it's awesome. She's, she's tough. 
All right, she's not squinching. The nose ring is centered. That's good. All right, let's take another one. So watch, I'm gonna show you the three as I build it out. So let's turn on, let's turn on th this light. And guys, I shoot with my, obviously the lights are very close to her. I shoot with the lights in frame because I want them really close because I want them to do specifically what I'm putting them there for. It's a game of inches. You're aware of that, right? If you're messing up your lighting and I'm gonna show you the big mistake people make in a minute, uh, we're gonna talk about that. So stand up straight. There you go. Can you squinch? Do you know what squinching is? Yes, lower lids up. How'd you know that? Let me see. It's like this. Don't do upper lids down, lower lids up. A little bit more like, there you go, good. But keep the hint of the smile. GM that forehead out. Let's take another shot. So I was at 1 80th of a second. I added another light. I should add a little bit of shutter speed, right? Let's try it. Scooch back a schmillimeter. Turn your shoulders this way a little bit. Tilt your head this way a little bit. Now GM your forehead straight out and then tilt back this way. Hold that, I want you very straight. Hold that and we're gonna compare this to the other shot. Let me take this out for a second. Hold that, keep that hand of the smile. Go chin out and down for me. Down, 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 down. Right there, hold that now, squinch it up. Hold that, that's sweet. All right, so I wait till I see what I want. Her expression is my responsibility. This is the thing you're not doing. I know you're not doing it. I know you're not doing it. You're not taking responsibility for their expression. If I modeled for years, believe it or not. I know it's a stretch, but I did. And whenever I got in front of a photographer's camera that didn't know, didn't give me direction, I looked out to lunch. Like, we do not, I said this yesterday, the coolest thing that I've learned since I was photographing is that our brain will try to tell us what our face looks like, but it does not know. Do any of you guys know what your face looks like right now? I don't think so. Hopefully you took a once over in the mirror before you came down here, right? You made sure everything was in shape. Right? But when you're in front of a camera, you have no clue. So what's the photographer's job? If you're looking in the mirror this morning, you can adjust your expression, right? Because you're seeing yourself. In front of a camera, you're not. So the, cam the photographer has to behave like a mirror for their subject. You have to be the mirror and be like, do this with your face, do that with your face. So this is not my light. It's a little bit overexposed. So let's go, let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 1 because I'm going to add another light my favorite light, which is this one. This is my beauty light. This is my fill from underneath, which I do for women, which I love. Scooch back a smidge. There, yeah, there you go. Scooch this way a little bit. There you go. Actually, no, go back the other way. Sorry, I was standing corrected. I got to see this light. All right, Bethany, you're doing great. Thank you for being so patient. Jam your forehead out and down. There you go. Good. Hold that. Scooch a little bit this way. There you go, good. Tilt your head a little bit that way. Chin down, hold that. Let me just do this a little bit. I'm gonna go up an inch. Hold on, let me get this out. Hold on one second, here we go. Chin down, scooch this way just a schm There you go, good. You're doing great. Tilt that, that, there you go. Jam that forehead out and down right now. Nose this way just a step right there. Hold that, I'll take it. All right, watch the difference in this light. Three light ratio, good question. Uh, they're about even, they're all at 30%. Uh, the bottom one might be at 35. Bottom one's at 35. And they're at 5,500 Kelvin. See the difference? Look at the difference between these three. So I'm opening up the shadows with the second light. I'm a little overexposed, right? But look, now it's top heavy. See how our cheeks go darker? So I gotta even it out with the bottom light. Now it's even, that's my work. And if you set up your configuration like this and shoot people like that and add a headshot element to your business, you will make money. And you will have a product that you can sell. And it works, it's a recipe that works. So I always tell everybody in the headshot crew when I'm coaching, do my recipe because I'm making money at it, I know you can, and then tweak it on your own to figure out what you wanna do. But you gotta have a consistent portfolio. Here's the mistake a lot of people make. Bethany, come forward a little. Spread your feet out a little because it's a little low. Come forward another smidge. Yeah, stay right there. Chin out and down. Look at her eyes. See how they got darker? This is ahead of my light convergence. I'll shoot it and I'll show you. The exposure is going to go up around her face. However, her eyes are going to go dark compared to her face. Do a closed mouth, tiny smile. You can keep it there. There you go. Good. All right. Now scooch back and stay there. And let's try this. Chin down a little bit. Hold that. That's amazing. 
Good. All right, hold on. She's doing it. Now, once I get rolling and I figure out people's, so there's the shot in the right light. There it is in the other light. Look at the ratio of the, the eyes are going dark. The explosion went up. I probably should have taken it down for you to have a better glimpse of this. But you can see that the eyes match the exposure on the face. When you shoot ahead of light convergence, those eyes go dark. And it's only, it's not, it's an incremental thing. You got to develop your eye for this. It's very tiny, but you got to see it. And then once you get that, I would have you fail. I don't want you failing by having them ahead of convergence. I'd rather have you fail backwards. So it's like a six inch window. So if she goes further back, what happens? Who knows? Anybody know what the inverse square law is? Light falls off with the square of the distance. That's right but it also gets flatter. So you've got softer light up front, right? Which creates a nice uh, little, you get a highlight on the side of the face and the sides of the cheeks go dark. If you move back, the light just gets flatter. So stand back there. Hold that, come, come this way a little bit and forward a little bit. Now she's way behind where I should be. So I'll just get my, this is a mistake, but I'm gonna do it. Hold that right there, I'll just take it. And you can, you'll see, it just gets flatter. Look at everything just kind of meshes all together. You don't get that beauty light, you see that? She's too far back. So too far forward's worse, too far back is not good. So let's find the sweet spot, come back forward. It's where these three lights converge. If I took a laser beam and shot it out of these lights, out of the center of them, I don't want it, any of those beams hitting her. So this light is gonna hit that shoulder or in front of it. This light is gonna, actually, what's wrong with me? This light's gonna come down, they're gonna come, this light's gonna go up over her head. This light's very important that it's low enough to light those eyes. And now I wanna try different sides. Now I've got that, I'm gonna try different sides of her face to see what I like. Come forward a smidge. Uh, back a millimeter. Good, let's try this. We got straight on, go nose this way. Hold that, chin down. Tilt your head a little bit that, hold that. That's a nice side of your face. I think you're a righty maybe, let's see. Hold that, as you can see, I'm shooting up on her a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, hold that, that's beautiful. Look at the, uh, the camera's on the tripod. See how it's not straight, it's up a little bit? I shoot a little bit below people for a reason. Who's more powerful, me or you right now? Right. And if I was on the floor, you'd be more powerful. So you want to shoot up a little bit on people. So we're going to try, let's try the other side. Go nose that way. Oh, hold that. See, I think she's ambifacial. Chin down. Beautiful, Bethany. Good job. We're going to hold that. Can you look a little sneakier over there? Can you look sneaky for me, like you're up to something? Hold that. I like that. Good. Now go back the other way. Go back to the other side. I'm not convinced. Hold on. I'm overexposing, I gotta fix this. Go nose this way a little bit. That, hold that, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Hold that, now go back the other way just to check it, hold on. It's still overexposed, I'm going 160. Chin down, a that's beautiful. Scooch back a millimeter, right there, right there. Do one more back the other way just to check it. Go, go back that way, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. That's great, all right, let's look at these. And we're looking at variations in the face, structure. Is that a shebang? Can we shebang that one? All right, I'm gonna go three, two, one. We're gonna freak out everybody else in the room. Three, two, one, shebang! All right, all right. So I love that, not as much. Are you with me? So if you don't figure this out for your subject, you're doing them a disservice. You understand that? You gotta get the person's right side of their face. If you were being photographed, wouldn't you want your good side of your face? Why would you shoot the bad side of the, do you know how to figure out the good side? It's hard to verbalize, but it's just, she's prettier to me over there than she is over there. All right, stay that way, go even further that way. Hold that, yeah, 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 yeah. Stay like, turn the body this way though. I like this, keep going, shoulders that way. I like this move, shoulders that way. Now the nose hard that way. And tilt that, hold that, let's see. That's it, go nose, even skew your nose and tilt the top of your head towards the Empire State Building. Thank you. You didn't laugh at my joke. She did not laugh. She can't hear me. All right, go nose out, that's fine. Tilt the head this way, all the speakers are behind me. 
So what I do is close the mouth, tiny smile. Bring your, bring your shoulders even more this way. Yeah, and then the nose that way. Hold that. You see how I do it? Nose to the finger to get them there. And then I'll put my hand like this and tilt her a little bit like the Tilt your head like that, even more. Like that. Hold that. That's beautiful. Good. Gorgeous. That's it. You're rocking. All right. Let's see. There it is. I like that. And there's a little bit of mouth tension there. You see it? We've got to work on that. That's pretty. That's beautiful. That side of her face is amazing. Can you come out, Bethany? You did great. Can we get a round of applause for Bethany? High five. Do you like that one? That one's cute. That one's cute. I think we got some good stuff. All right, so there's a couple things that I was doing while I was doing that that are behind the scenes, like camera height. One of the things I talk about is the angle of the subject. That's why I stand them up, stand them up really straight. If you lean them forward, you're going to get a lot of shoulders and people look crunched. That's why I don't sit people. Also, if you sit people, they're wearing clo the clothes change, right? So if you stand them up, you can tighten the clothes, make sure everything looks good. Uh, that's really important. So as you can see, I shot this woman. I usually like the camera at about the chin, but this woman, and she's standing up straight. The camera's even lower than that. It's like at her throat. But look at the shot. Oh, wait. You guys aren't even on my screen. I'm going through slides. Can you go to my screen? All right, so we're talking camera height, right? Angle of subject to the camera matters. If you lean them or sit them, it matters. This is the angle that I shoot on. I, the camera is shooting up a little bit, and it's actually at the height of her throat. I'm always on a tripod. I got my trusty Faisal CT3472 LV. I love it. It's my favorite thing. But watch the shot. Does that look like I'm low? Doesn't look low. You got to shoot your pictures. How many people shoot tethered? All right, I want the hands. I shoot 98% tethered. I want you to go home. How many people have Lightroom? You got Lightroom. All right, I want you. How many people have Capture One? Okay, you're shooting tethered into Capture One. I get it. I shoot Capture One. Uh, I have Lightroom. I want you to try tethering. Will you go over to the Tether Tools booth and get a cable for yourself? and try tethering, you should do it. Number one coaching tool, why? Because I can show, you. believe it or not, humans have the capacity to learn. If I show them bad pictures of themselves, not they're not really that bad, but I'm not gonna show them, you, you don't wanna show them bad. Like if your lighting sucks, don't tether. Don't do that. You wanna show them decent stuff. So I start with the head on head shot, well, like I did with Bethany, and I work to get her head very straight. And then I, I act like they're standing on a clock and the, and the, the camera's at 12 o'clock and they're in the middle. And then I put their nose at like 11.30 and 12.30 like I did with her. So you saw all that. That was really cool. Uh, and then I'm trying to find their sweet spot. So I like the right side of her face. Uh, but 60% of the time, if I took a poll of, the, of you guys, 60% of you probably are better looking on your left side. There is a hair part theory. Uh, whichever side you part your hair on 90% of the time, it is the right, it's the good side of your face. Now, if you're lacking follicular horsepower, you have to remember where you used to part your hair, right? And you got to figure that out. I showed this yesterday, so you don't need to see this, but all the celebrities know this. I shoot a lot of celebrities, and they usually know the side of their face and will tell you. This guy I shot like this, I was not going to shoot him like this. Look at the banana nose. And how straight his nose here is compared to here. That's the only shot I kept because it was fun. But you can see the nasal curve. you got to know all this stuff. So when you're sussing out people, you've got to look at the different features that they have. And I think the human face is the most in interesting thing to look at. So that's why I'm a headshot photographer. And I shoot people up close all the time, every day, all day long. I love it. Ambifacial is a word I made up. There's a video online where you can really get into this. If you go to my YouTube channel, it's Peter Hurley Photo. And you can see people that uh, have been genetically gifted by their parents have both sides of their face look good. And you could shoot them every, every way, but they have a sweet spot, and you have to find it. If you don't find it, the next photographer that they're with might, and then your shot isn't going to look as good, right? So you got to keep your eyes open. you got to pay attention to what you're doing. Squinching is my thing. I created it. I trademarked it. I made up a word. 
I was on Good Morning America with it. Secret of looking picture perfect um, in every photo. And According to a new video from a professional photographer that has gone well, what? super viral, there's one facial expression that makes everyone instantly look better. It's called squinching. And we sent Sarah Haynes out to learn how it's done. Sarah? All right, we don't have time for that. It was in the, in the news and everything. This is me squinching. So what happens when people get in front of your camera? When a human is uncertain, just uncertain, we open our eyes. Like deer in the headlights, we just go like this. Like when you meet somebody for the first time, uh, some people might be anxious. You see they are, they're talking, hi, how are you? You're meeting a lot of people today, right? Yesterday and stuff. You'll see the people that are chill with themselves or whatever, their eyes are like, other people are like, hi, how are you? You know, you gotta, you can't negative squinch, I call it brain freeze or out to lunchitis, and we've all shot people doing this. And they do it. I mean, I had her do it for me just to accentuate my point, but that's weird. Like, people don't walk around like that. If somebody looked at you here like that, you would run out of the room. You'd get away from them, right? So you don't want to do that. Uh, the jawline is the other video that I did. All right, here we go. Watch this. Here we go. This is Kayla. Now, Kayla's back. Now, you know, I, I had her, then I'm like, no, this doesn't fly. Show me what you got. Get that forehead towards the camera. Boom. Holy smokes, guys. Look at the difference here. From there to there. Come on. You got to be kidding me. Look at this. I got an even better one. Watch this. Watch this one. We're going to go with Callie. Here's Callie, right? Pretty girl. Nice. Not bad with the jawline. You know, we still, it appears that we have some jawline here, but watch, we have some action in here. I don't want to see, I want, I want to stretch that skin out. Watch this. Shabang, there, now we're talking. Oh my goodness, all right? Now we got, look at this, from there to there. Unbelievable, unbelievable guys, unbelievable. All right, so that's where Shabang was born. But the Shabang for me, it's, it's a couple things. One is I defined it because I stopped yelling shebang, and people were like, you got to yell shebang. I was like, all right, I'll yell shebang. It's fine. But the point is, is that you have to get excited about your work. I don't care what the word is or what you do. When you're photographing somebody, and if you're not tethered, and you look at the back of your camera, and you don't get excited about the images, how do they feel? They don't know what's going on. you got to give them feedback. And if you're not excited about your work, who else is going to be? So for me, I yell shebang because I get excited. Then they get excited, and that's guess what happens? Number one thing, what's the number one question I get? Number one question everybody asks me is, how do you relax your subject in front of a camera? You know how you do it? First of all, you don't say relax. Have you ever had somebody say to you, just relax and just be like, oh my God, thanks for telling me that. I feel so much better now. Never happens. But photographers, I get photographed a lot because I do workshops and I let the photographers photograph me because I want to see how they behave behind their camera. And when they tell me to, I modeled for eight years. You put me in, a, in, in front of a camera and there's not one ounce of anxiety in me. I'm not, I'm totally relaxed. So when I know they're saying relax to me, they got problems, all right? Don't tell your subject to the relax. The way you relax them is to do one thing and one thing only, have them forget about the camera. How are they gonna forget about the camera? You're gonna create an atmosphere that allows them to thrive and flourish the way that you do it. Not the way I do it. I'll give you tips on how I do it, but you have to figure out how to, it's an energy thing. You have to figure out how to do it for yourself. Nobody shoots like you. Nobody shoots like you. Nobody shoots like you. Nobody shoots like you. It's, it's, you could get the same person up here with the same lighting, the same camera, everything, and you're going to get different shots than I would because of energy. The energy between you and your subject is what it's about, and you have to find that. Hey, uh, Kristen, call my name. Old photography trick. Watch this. Kristen, call my name. I'm sorry? You gotta call my name. When, I, when I'm back like this way, you gotta call my name. He's not gonna shut up until you do it, so yeah. you just want to do it. Wow, that's gorgeous. Kevin? That's yeah, what's up? Printing? Take it. Snap it. Oh, you know, snap that shot. Print you got that shebang. <laughs> they find me. I don't know. These writers find me. I'll take it. So I just did the, with Bethany, I did the hook lasso string maneuver, I call it. So. Everybody, hook and top of your head, this is jawline, right? And, and it's pulling you up, so you're up like this. Immediately, we're stronger, right? Then imagine there's a lasso around your neck. It's attached to a wall behind you, so your collarbones can't go forward. What happens when I don't say that? People go like this to get their jawline out. When I need them to go like this. So I tell them, imagine your neck is like a giraffe, but your collarbones can't move, but your neck can. So I do that, 
And then I say, imagine I'm running a string from your nose to the center of my lens and I'm pulling it. And that's immediately gonna get them up, out, and out like that. And that's, this is the number one way to make somebody more attractive. All right, you wanna learn more about headshot photography? I will teach you. I run the headshot crew and I will tell you, I, I give referrals to photographers all over the world through it. And you can be in my find a photographer search and check that out. All these tips are in there. This is, uh, this is an awesome story. I guess I'll show it for a minute and then. All right, go ahead. Tell me what you got. So I've been on the site for, for six months. And then in December, I got, a, I got an email from the contact form. Somebody found me on the website. They said, uh -huh. hey, I've got 75 people coming in. A, you know, 75 people. This guy was six months with me. A convention. I said, of course I can so I gave them my price. Uh, I told them I was available. They booked me immediately. And wow. so I ordered a, um, a Westcott flex kit. I rented one because I didn't have the money to buy one. Rented all right. One, I'm not going to show you all this, but in, Trey shot 75 and, uh, people, people after on, being six uh, months forums, with me. Helped me with the settings and everything. Uh -huh. So I showed up 10 days later, shot 75 people. And I studied all of your, I studied all your videos from F stoppers. I studied everything on the site. And when I got there, I wasn't nervous. I knocked it. That's out the, the key. And they loved it. And so if I can teach you guys how to be more confident when you stand behind one, that, I did that it. Job. That's what it is. Number two, Confidence is infectious. That enabled me to be successful in this because without all this information that you guys put out, I, I never would have done a good job. And so it made my December, um, I was struggling financially and it made my December fantastic. I was able to, you know, buy Christmas presents for my kid. And it, anyway, that's, that is guys, that's why I do this. And Trey did it. If you guys want to get the deal and get in on my coaching, just take a picture of that and see me afterwards. But the point is, if I can make you more confident behind your camera, confidence is infectious. It, it drizzles off on your subject. If you're confident, they're gonna feel it. And if they feel it, you're gonna get amazing stuff. Now, technically, you gotta be savvy and you gotta get a, get a, uh, a, a good shot. Um, I'm also sponsoring, Canon sponsoring Headshot Mania 2 in Vegas. I'm gonna be there before WBBI if you wanna come check that out. I'm gonna shoot a guy uh, because I want to. Hold on. And I'm doing the Headshot Intensive. Which is, my, which is my workshop, and I got a couple spots in West Palm next week if you're interested. But I wanna talk about this. So I wanna show you how I do guys lighting, and I need a guy. No, I already picked him. You do it? Come on up. I just, guys, there's something called lookability. So when I look around the room, I'm like, look at the hair. He's got the shaved head, he's got the gauged ears in, he's got the beard. I spotted him, I was like, I'm gonna see if I can roll with this guy. Dan, get up here somehow. He's got a cool jacket on. Come on up. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, Dan, Peter. Nice to meet you. You got a good look, right? Right? So in your portfolio, you want to put interesting-looking people. I mean, everybody's interesting and everybody's got beauty. I know I, I have to find it in each person I, I shoot, but he's got the hair and the whole look, so I was like, let's do this. All right, so what we're going to do is we are gonna set up for men's lighting. So let's first look. All right, so if I'm right, 60% of the people are better looking on their left side, right? Go the other way? Yeah, he's better on the other side, right? So I key left. So we're gonna key left, which means my rim light or kicker, which I'll use this one for, I guess, because I'm, did I just kick it off? I'm kicking my kicker, it's on, all right. Let's do this. I'm gonna set it up right at his ear height and I'm gonna set it up right, I wanna, I wanna get it off the background. Let's, let's use the inverse square law to darken that background a little bit. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down to, let's try 15% and see how that does. Now if you're in the front and we position him correctly, let's do this. Let's see how high this one will go. Oh, it makes it, it makes it, we're in business. All right. So they're really easy to adjust. I'm on the fly with this. If I, everybody asks me if I'm shooting corporate, 
do I change for the men and women? And I, yeah, I do, because it usually doesn't take me very long. And I know my settings, and my power just went out. Hold on, here we go. And so I'm going to do my fill at 8%, and I'm going to keep the key at 30. All right, Dan. Come forward a step for me. I'm going to set them up. So I, it's a game of inches, right? So I'm going to, what's the furthest light for me to touch right now? The kicker. I could touch the ones in front, but I, for me to go back there is a pain in the butt. Like, I got to get back there. So I'm going to set up the kicker. So if you guys are right in front, you can see the kick on them, right? It's a little harsh for me. It's soft, but it's nice, but it's a little over. But come forward a step. Watch it change as he moves. Go that way a step. That's better. That's really nice. Watch when I turn it. See how it got sharper, brighter? See how harsh it is now? That's not the way I'm kicking these days. So I'm kicking to the side, and that's the reason why. See how it's softened? You got to be here to see it, right? You guys are lucky. All right, there we go. Let's take a look. That's really nice. Now we'll set up the key. And what I, oh man, he's got a limbic ring. You got a little bit of a limbic ring. That's kind of cool. You know what that is? No, <laughs> you didn't know. Does anybody know what a limbic ring is? Anybody else have one? It's, it's uh, when you have really bright colored eyes, it's a dark circle around the eye. He's got a slight one. He's got it. It's there. Let's, I'll show it to you. We'll zoom into it. So what I like to do is I, I can cross shadow. Watch the difference in the light. See how I can shadow him up like that. And he could take it because he's, he's really cool looking. But usually, I want to dip, because he's got the eyes, I want to dip the light over, put it in my frame to get light in that second eye. So I'm going to key the light in on this cheek. And it's, like I said, it's a game of inches, so I'm going to set it up about like that. And I want the, uh, I want, I've got a little overhead stuff going on. I'm going to do something like this, right about there. Dan's being patient with me. All right, now I got my fill which I don't think I'm actually going to use because I want to create some shadow. And we've got some ambient uh, light in here that's giving me some contamination light-wise. But we'll try this. All right, let's go. Now I'm going to raise my camera just as a little bit below his chin. He's already looking good. He can't see his clothes, can he? So I have to go in there and primp him, don't I? Are you prepared for that? I'm just going to fix this a little bit. Jack the collar up a little bit. Close it up a little bit. Maybe button this a little bit so it holds. I can do it. I'm having a wrist issue here. All right, there we go. Good. He's already standing up straight. Go chin down slightly. Chin down a little bit. Yeah, hold that right there. Let's see how we do. Let me see this. That's cool. Now, all right, so that's negative squinching. Can you give me a squinch? Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. I like that. I can work with that. All right. So I took a shot of, can we get a, the, the camera on the monitor, please? Can we go for the camera, please? All right. Three, two, one. Shabang. All right, watch this. Look at this. This is squinching. That's negative squinching. Which is better? Hello? If you just sat in here for that amount of time and you just see this to that, what am I talking about? Now look at this. You want to see the limbic ring? Watch this. Look how sharp this lens is. Look at this eye. See the darkness around the outside of the color? That's the limbic ring. Now I could probably, I got really good skin tone. Are we printing this one? You got to print this one. Let's shoot a couple. Let's try different sides of his face and try some stuff. When you have somebody like this, I don't like strobes. This is why I use continuous light, because I want the pupil small, because I want real estate in the eye. Like, if the pupil's big, where's the blue go? I'm going to get black. Why would I do that if I got eyes like this guy? I know how to pick them, don't I? <laughs> Good job, man. You look great. You're looking good. Let's, let's try the other side. Let's try, let's try, turn the body slightly this way. I always go opposite by a little bit less and then nose towards that key and tilt the top of your head. Follow me. Look at me. Tilt your head this way. Don't go that far because I lose my kick. Bring your nose back. No, no, no. 
You stay over there. Bring your nose back this way. There's my kick. All right, hold it. Can you give me some brow pressure? Brow pressure, like this. Look at me. Yeah, like that. Hold that. Don't change a thing. Don't change a thing. Hold that. Squinch it with the brow pressure. It's a little squinch here. There you go. Good. Oh, my gosh. Guys, so what are the three things we can change on our face? Who knows? Most people don't use eyebrows in shots. I like using eyebrows, especially with guys. I got one minute. He's telling me I got one minute. Three, two, one, shabang! Oh man, Dan, you rock. Do you like that? How's that? That's pretty cool. We're gonna print that one out. Are we printing that one out? Print that one out for him. Guys, I, I have to tell you, Dan, thank you very much. All right, you did great. You did great. It's so good. I love doing it. Um, guys, bring my presentation back up. So Hurleyisms is my app. Go to Hurleyisms.com. I didn't get into it in this because Dan was so great and Bethany was so great. I didn't need to get them laughing and stuff like that. But you can use this. It'll give you, like, for free, 50 lines that I say that just get your subject moving. It creates this kind of thing. It's like... I'll say, it runs across like this. I'll say, look enlightened, decrease the distance between your eyebrows, give me a look like you're impersonating a rodent. Whatever, they crack up. You don't have time for jokes. No jokes. You've got to get them working back at you. It creates this. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. All right, you get it. Anyway, guys, I just want to show you a couple things. Come to Headshot Mania 2. See me after if you want to. Uh, I've also got the Find a Photographer search on Headshot Crew. Go to headshotcrew.com and get yourself in there so you can get work. It's absolutely part of the program. I don't have anything to do with those contact leads. Go to you directly. I don't make a dime off that. Uh, and then if you really want to get going, go to my tutorials page. I launched a new sales method called the TNT method. Anyway, I love doing this. This is the one I want you to do. Photo is sponsoring my headshot of the month. I want you to take your best headshot that you've ever taken and post it in this contest. It's absolutely free. Just take a shot of that. Put your shot in there. I will critique it live uh, the first week in February, and we'll see where you're at. I cannot coach you if I cannot see what you're doing. And the, the winner gets a Pro, a Pro Photo C1, which is really cool. And we've got other giveaways from B&H, and I give away my tutorials randomly. So get a shot in there. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Enjoy the show. And I'll be walking around. I'll do free selfies with everybody. No charge. And I'll sign them on a release if you got one. All right? Three, two, one. Shabang. All right. Thanks, guys.